You're listening to Cinematic Adventures, proud member of the Misfit Faction Media Network. Good morning, Vietnam! I love the smell of napalm in the morning. You're gonna need a bigger boat. I feel the need for need for speed. Rose, we're going, we don't need roads. Snakes, why did it have to be snakes? Vitus? We don't need no vices. I don't have to show you any stinking vices. You make me want to be a better man. Nobody puts baby in a corner. I wish I knew how to quit you. Love means never having to say you're sorry. He's looking at you, kid. Not bad. I'm just drawn that way. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Cinematic Adventures, something I didn't think I would be saying in the near future. As always, if you guys are listening to us on the go, you can find us on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and basically anywhere you get your podcasts. You can also find more of our content on our website, themisfaction.com. There you find links to not only this show, but some of our other shows like the Multiverse Fancast and MF Uncensored. As always, I'm one of your hosts, Paul. With me in the studio, finally, is Sean. Sean, how are you today? I am good, and I don't know what you're talking about. I'm here all the time. It, you just don't want to record. It's so weird how you say that, because this is my fourth podcast of the weekend. But sure, Sean. Producer sure. Mel, I'm here once a week. Producer Melanie lets me in, but you're no you're no show. You, you are this, a liar. You're the reason why, you know, we haven't been able to do this. Liar and a charlatan, <laughs> my friends. But, you know, I digress. Yes, it has been a while. Unfortunately, scheduling has not been in our favor as of late. And we've had, you know, between things. Thanksgiving and sickness and busy and work and laziness. We'll be honest, laziness sometimes. Mm. Mm. We we have been a, a little bit of been on a little bit of a hiatus for the past what three weeks since our hundredth episode. Something yeah, like which that. I don't really think is that bad. Yeah, you know, that's not too bad. When you look deep down, it's like eh, okay. A hiatus is like you know three months. Hun- a hiatus is what you and Ronnie went through. Oh my God! Between but- your first stint in multiverse and then your second stint and the third. There's a third. So when we did Multiverse, we were recording every week, sometimes like two, three episodes a week. It was rough to start off with, especially for like such a baby podcast. And then we took a break and we came back to try and record. And we did it was it was Black uh, Panther. No, it was one of the one of the crossovers for Arrow, uh, and the whole thing got corrupted. Well, and we were so upset that we just didn't we didn't do anything. Well, that was again. the thing with you guys. You guys started off with every single CW show. You would like it was rough. You know, go over every episode from the week before. So, Fla- I mean, I Flash, can Arrow, Flash, Arrow, so, and Legends. Supergirl? I don't think Supergirl at the time, but I uh, think we did pick it up eventually. And yeah, to do four different shows in in one episode, too. Like, yeah. it, it was wild. But uh, we are back, and this is Cinematic Adventures, not Multiverse Fancast. No, it's not. You can find both on themisfitfaction.com there. Yes, you can. But uh, anyway, so to celebrate our 101st episode, we thought we'd do something. Who would think you would celebrate 101? I mean, you I'm celebrate a hundred, but then a hundred and one. I'm just glad we're back. What, Let's there, be honest. What, what could we possibly do for a hundred and first episode? Can mm. you think of anything with 101? Dalmatians? Hmm. That's I'll, a solid guess. That is a solid guess. Yes, we are talking about the 101 Dalmatian franchise. Yeah, you've never think franchise, but the more we dug into it, it's like, yeah, I guess it is a franchise. It, it's kind of weird. It is very strange. Like, oh, they did that? Oh, that's right. They did do that. Yeah, oh, they did. Yeah. And, did that. and that. Several several of them. But we are going to talk about, first and foremost, the animated film from mm-hmm. 1961, One. which does have a sequel, shockingly, in 2003. What movie doesn't have a sequel, I think, is the best in, especially for, for Especially for Disney. We're going to talk about the live action adaptations, and we're also going to talk about Ella. Yeah. Mm. All right. But anyway, and then we'll maybe we'll talk a little bit about the Disney's new trend of giving backstories to some some of their most iconic villains because mm. that's like their thing now. So let's start off at the beginning. But before we do that, we do have some news, Sean. If you will. Uh, yeah. So for anyone who's listened to this podcast, it is no secret that Paul and I are treasured fans of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers TV series, which came out when we were kids. And uh, sadly, uh, last week, we got the word that uh, Jason David Frank, who played Tommy, the original Green Ranger slash White Ranger, passed away at the age of 49. So we were a little crushed by that news. And so it's it's been a week for us to, you know, sink, to let that sink in and, you know, just our thoughts and prayers with his family and uh, with all his friends, you know, all the other Ranger castmates that knew him so well. You know, we've seen all the videos come out, Austin St. John, Amy Jo Johnson, Karen Ashley, you know, uh, Catherine Sutherland. So it's been tough. You know, it's been tough. So that was, a, that was, that hurt. Yeah. That one hurt. I mean, because we, I mean, obviously Ty Trang is no longer with us, but that was, 
you know, 20 years ago. Yeah, we, we were, were young. We were still in high school, and I don't even think we knew about it, really, oh, until it we were older, until, like, IMDb and, and stuff, and you could research this stuff a little better, but... Well, it wasn't like it was, you well, know... There was no social media, so there was no way of us knowing. Like, literally, we're, we were sitting at breakfast, and it popped. And we're oh, like, yeah. I caught it, like, four minutes after the news broke. And I was just, I was waiting for it to be a hoax. I really was. I was just... That's like, happened okay. a few times. I know, because you, you told me, and I just started scrolling, and I was like, there's no official... Yeah. There's no official article. There's nothing here. But then you go on IMDb and they had it on IMDb. And I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. It's a shame, you know. Yeah. And I think they're saying it was self-inflicted, unfortunately. No, yeah, that was the thing at first. They were saying it was a suicide. But then it was like, let's not assume, you know, don't, you know, let it, let it, let the official word come out. But, oh God, that, oh, that one, that one hit deep. Yeah, because he was like... He was very big still in the Ranger circuit. He was oh, very yeah. like he would he would do conventions and I'm do uh, projects. So mad and, I didn't get his autographs. Yeah, it's a shame. I have a uh, I have Jason's or the, or the Jason. The, I have uh, the Austin St. John. I have the movie poster. I got Amy Jo Johnson. I got Karen Ashley, Steve Cardenas, and Johnny Young Bosch. I was still missing uh, Jason David Frank yeah, and uh, David Yost. So cause yeah. we saw him. I don't know if you were at this one. I was at a Comic Con like five years ago. I was at New York Comic Con maybe like five years ago and he was there but I didn't get because I think he was a special officially a special guest like you had to like wait online to get mm-hmm. his autograph. Yeah there was no buying it ahead so of time. So I didn't I wasn't able to get his autograph but I saw him do like a one of those 20 minute Q&A things live and that was really cool I have to admit. That yeah. Was just seeing him live in person. It's a shame. Yeah. But and then I think you had some other news oh, that you wanted to bring so up. so just you know with that tragic news on Sunday and then I wake up I believe Monday morning, to the news that the Walt Disney Company had fired its CEO Bob Chapek, and brought back Bob Iger. And and you know, uh, for the Disney fanatics out there, and I'm one of them. I'm a big Disney fan. I I, I really am. This is huge news. It was great news because Disney was going downhill. You think so? I think so. In what regards? The parks. You know, with the the choices they were making in terms of the parks, the I mean, even the entertainment value. I mean, you know, they you you wouldn't know if movies were going to go to theaters. Were they going to go to streaming? I, the people making the movies didn't know, mm. and it wasn't the choice of the filmmakers. They had created a division in Disney where this one person was in charge of deciding whether this was going to go to streaming or go to theaters. So they like took the creative. Uh, you know, away from John Favreau, away from Kevin Feige. Kevin Feige was close to leaving Marvel. Yeah. Like, it was getting that bad. And I think that's a factor in, you know, I mean, I, they haven't officially announced the actual true reason why, but I think it's a, I think a lot of the creative people behind, you know, Star Wars, behind, you know, Marvel were like, you know, we're, we're going to leave. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know if they're officially upset that they lost James Gunn. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. Probably not. But, you know... Big news. Big news. So, yeah, he's back for two years, and then they're going to try and groom the new successor, and uh, hopefully, you know, this brings Disney back. Oh, I'm hearing rumblings that Apple's going to buy Disney, which... Which would be weird. I, I mean, that's I mean, that's just crazy to me. Like, oh. that Apple... I mean, Apple can do it, but... I don't know. I just don't get why they would want to. They have their own know. entertainment. They have their own streaming. They have that's their own... What would be the... You know the factor behind that, like what do they want? Like they just want the Disney. I don't know. That would be that would be huge. If, if that Disney happened. got sold, oh absolutely, oh absolutely. Yeah. Like the idea of somebody buying Disney in itself is yeah. just wild. Because we've always done Disney buying. You know, obviously Disney buying Marvel, Disney buying Star Wars, Disney buying 20th Century Fox. So it's you know, I have think someone buy all that. Unfortunately, I think if they did that, they would get way. Apple would then suddenly be the one getting way too close to a monopoly. Like uh, yeah, I don't know how that works in terms of. Because you know, Warner Brothers is a big, has a big, you know, has a bunch of subdivisions of movie and stuff and studios and stuff in it. So I don't know how they they deem that, but yeah, that would be interesting. Yeah. All right. Is that any other yeah, news? That's Anything else? That's about it. I just thought those two were big things that had happened, obviously, since the last time we've done an episode. So I wanted to make sure we got those out there. All right. Well, thank you, Sean, for the yeah, news. I appreciate I, it I, so I, much. I have a reason to be here. Okay. I mean. So you get passionate though. I like that. I do get passionate. That's why we talk over each other because sometimes I can't. I can't get you to stop. Oh, shut up, will you? I would never say that <laughs> loudly. But anyway, let's talk about 101 Dalmatians because mm. that's. It's also kind of a, a Christmassy movie. 
I would argue the first one. Yeah. I don't know why I always think Christmas when I think of the first one, just because of the it snow. Snows. Yeah, I don't know. It, it's weird. Snow means Christmas to me. I'm sorry. Or the holidays. Like I'm, you know what? I don't know how it works up here. You got to talk to tech support sometimes. But anyway, <laughs> so let's talk. Just initial thoughts about 101 Dalmatians, the 1961. Uh, I mean. I can only talk about when I was a kid. It was definitely one of the the, the animated movies that I watched more frequently than others. Mm-hmm. Um, Cruella didn't scare me much as a kid, so I just remember... Not Cruella having... terrified me at the end when she's oh, driving with the, with and her, her eyes are red. Bugged out eyes. Yeah. yeah. I was oh. actually watching it earlier today with uh, my girlfriend, Kate, and we were just like, you know, watching this and we're just like, oh, this, we, we thoroughly enjoy this movie. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just one of the top, you know... It's one of the like the the Disney movies where it's just it's not the greatest, but it's still you know very much liked and and appreciated. Yeah, I mean for me, I remember watching it a lot as a kid. Yeah, and like I haven't seen it in years. Like I'll, I'll be honest, it is not a movie that I can ever just kind of <laughs> pop in and be like, oh, I love this. <laughs> no, I like I need to. I would, I would need a reason, like doing a podcast about it. But, oh, but eh, did you? Did <laughs> not. Let's be honest. I definitely did not watch this movie beforehand. Because I, I forget how long this movie actually is. And then there's, as a kid, I always thought like all 100, like that, all the Dalmatians belong to, like, you know, oh, you no. find out. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting movie. It's definitely back in the day where the villain was like legitimately terrible. She's smoking all the time. Smoking. She's evil from the get go. There's nothing hiding her intentions. And we're going to talk about how in this movie there was nothing redeemable about her, but suddenly now we have to talk about the backstory about all of our Disney villains. Mm. But for me, like, you know, this movie has a lot of iconic. The Cruella de Vil song is still one of the Cruella best. De Vil. Yeah, that, that's it. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. I just, but, in case people didn't know. In case people. Why are you listening? I don't know. Get out of here. But, uh, you know, it's it's an icon. I can't remember any other songs, though, from the first movie. That was it. It, was, I think it wasn't was, a musical. It wasn't, yeah. there wasn't like, wasn't like Jungle Book where you had Bare Necessities and, you know, I Want to Be Like You. Is this during um, the Golden Age for Disney? No, no. This is the 60s. This is after Walt Disney personally just kind of was like Pashtana non grata with the animated movies. So, actually, this is the first animated movie that used the, they called it the... Uh, why am I blanking on what it was called? The xerography animation process, which you can, we were watching it this morning and you could tell it wasn't the full on detail like the early movies were. Like if you watch Snow White or Pinocchio or even Cinderella, those movies are so beautifully drawn, detailed and stuff. This one, I wouldn't call it lazy. It was a, it was a cost cutting move. It was yeah. a way to save money. And, well, if and, you watch some of the other Disney movies, you could see they reused the animation. Well, that too. Yeah, that was a big thing in the '60s and the '70s when the studio was, you know, you know, struggling for money. And it was also, again, it was a way to, to cut corners. If you watch uh, Robin Hood, Robin Hood and Jungle Book, Baloo, they oh, do yeah, the same dance. Right. Yeah, yeah. And then in, in Robin Hood, uh, Maid Marian does a dance with a couple of characters, and it's the same dance that Snow White does with oh, the yeah. Seven Dwarfs. It's wild the way. That, I pointed it out to producer Melanie because she's a huge Disney fan. Like mm-hmm. we love watching Disney movies, but I pointed it out to her, and then she, we watched like a whole YouTube video about all these different. It's crazy yeah. the, the way that they do that. Now there are some other characters. You always think about the the, the Dalmatians because it's weird. This is a cartoon, a Disney cartoon where the the dogs can talk. Like so, mm-hmm. you at least have an idea of what they're what they're thinking, what they're saying. There are human characters, but I feel like they're really not. Oh, yeah, it's it's Roger and Anita, but. You know. And it's funny because it's the opposite in the live action one. Well, in the live action one, they made a, an interesting decision. They could have gone either way, where they could have gone where they were voice voices for the animals but they decided not to which i think was a brave move Mm -hmm. and it it, i think kind of gave a little more heart to the movie that they were able to convey the same story with the dogs and just not have them talk yeah so Um, let's talk about that really quick so animals in in movies and tv have there have been times where they talk where they don't talk mm -hmm. like when did we're jumping ahead look at like lassie lassie doesn't talk no but then look at like homer bound and you get, you know, the the, the 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 actors doing the voices of Homer Bound. What what year did the live action one come 96. out? 96. 96. So what are some other... We also had, like, that was, like, around the time of Babe. Yes. And Babe and Gordy. About you the, remember Gordy? I remember Gordy. It was, Gordy. like, the never, knockoff Babe? I, yeah, I never saw it, but Babe was... Babe's... Yeah, Babe was the one where it's, like, again, all the animals talk, and it's clearly puppets in certain situations, and then real animals in the other. Because when they do talking animals in film, Mm -hmm. they either do it like they did Homeward Bound, Mm -hmm. where you just hear the dogs, you don't see them talking, you don't see... And then, which I, for me, I find more realistic. 
tactic, which yeah. is a weird way to describe it. No, I, I get it because it's just it's you're not you're not altering the the animal. You're not right. you know adding like a fake Mandela effect to Mandela us. Mandela effect to it. Yeah, you're not. That's why you know I like Homer Bound because the dogs are just being dogs, and then the voices are just coming in over you know. You yeah, know, without any mouth movement. But for this, I think it works. That you know, you got a lot of different dog <laughs> characters. They're all around, and they all are able to uh, to talk. And they talk to they just talk to each other. It's not like the, the animals talking to the people. No, no, they don't. They don't go that. It's not the uh, the the mice and Cinderella talking to Cinderella. It's not you know the flounder, the fish talking to Ariel. It's very sim. It's it's life. The dogs can't talk to the humans, but the dogs can talk to each other. You know, and that bothers me. So, ready? In The Little Mermaid, you mentioned Flounder being able to talk to Ariel. Now, these animals can communicate with here, with humans, but they choose not to in this movie. And I'm going to point out exactly— In 101 Dalmatians? No, in Little Mermaid. Sorry. Because okay. Sebastian's able to sing an entire serenade with Kiss the Girl. And mm-hmm. they, obviously, they hear it. Well, and how do you like, know? Because he re- Eric reacts to it I several times. Know. You but have then, no idea what's going on in Eric's mind. Oh my god! <laughs> I will argue. Disney movies need to get their rules together. Oh, I am the over rules it. Rules change per movie. The rules do change per movie. But so the original uh, One Hundred and One Dalmatians, though, like it, it ends basically on the the happiest of notes, right? Like the Cruella's defeated. Violent car crash. By the Violent. way, and she is like perfectly fine. Literally, the truck hits her. Dead on on the side of the car. Her body gets launched out of the car, and magically she's standing up as if nothing happened. Wild. I love it. It was. I even said that to, to, to Kate, and I'm like, she's. how is she alive right now? Nobody knows. How is she alive right now? Nobody knows. And then of course, they don't even do that in the remake. They just were like, they arrest her, and they put her in a truck with everyone else. And, and that's then she it. goes to rehab. Okay. Or something stupid like that. I haven't seen the second 101 Dalmatian, 102 Dalmatians. Well, we'll talk probably about, still seen that in theaters. We'll talk about that in a second. Oh. But so, you know, the movie did really well, all things considering. I think on a budget of $3.6 million, it made $303 million. Wow. For yeah. 1961, that's, that's pretty big. good. That's pretty I mean, good. There was, there, you know, Disney movies, you know, say what you want about them. They were money makers, the animated movies. They were, they, they were not... It's funny how when you hear that Walt Disney lost interest, this was a man who would invent, you know, create something special. He did it with Mickey Mouse. He did it with, you know, the animate, the feature length animated movies and then making feature length live action movies. And every time he would do something, he would get tired of it and want to go on to the next thing. So like, you know, he creates Snow White and, you know, does a whole bunch of really well done animated movies. Then he kind of is like, all right, he gets a Cinderella that's like, but he's just he's not into it anymore mm-hmm. so like you know he's like overseeing it from afar and but it's crazy to me that you know he lost interest in it but it was still such a money maker for the studio oh absolutely and then after he died it kind of died down and the movies weren't as good anymore even though I, I'll argue that some of them are still very very well done in terms of just I like them as a kid yeah um, I don't think we, we didn't notice when we were young that the quality of Disney movies went up and down so much no no. Um, that was not something we ever like. We were kids. It's weird watching Disney movies now. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they're really good. Other times we're like, Sigh. but I know my preference. But what's yours? The the new more CGI ish or computer generated oh, like Pixar look versus the traditional animation. Yeah. Look? I I guess I could say I I've grown on the three D animation. I just it it angers me that you've totally gone away from that. Mm-hmm. I know. Excuse me. They obviously had a stretch of really bad hand-drawn animation movies with like they'll 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 throw Emperor's New Groove in there, which but I agree with you, it's it's better movie than it's portrayed as. Mm-hmm. But then you have like Treasure Planet, which was a bomb. You had um, Atlantis, Lost Empire, which wasn't a, a big T- hit. Titan A.E. You remember that oh, one? Titan A.E. was Fox. I mean, that almost took Fox's and that took Fox's animation studio down, which is a shame because I do thoroughly enjoy that. Yeah, movie. I mean, Anastasia. Was a big Fox God, one. I, I can't even remember Anastasia. Yeah, you know? I just remember the bat. But you know, Pixar comes along and they introduce us to this 3D animation, and it blows us away. But it blows us away because the stories are so good. Mm-hmm. And then Disney, and then they in Disney's just like, oh well, you know, it's because it's 3D. Nobody wants to look at 2D anymore. And I like, will argue it's because like, Disney still treats its audiences semi mature. Mm-hmm. Like they still kill their villains every once in a while, yeah. which is still like jarring but, but like so to me like if we had seen if they had done frozen hand-drawn mm-hmm. i don't 
think it would have differed in any way in terms of the the look, the quality, the, the, all well, that. the quality and the uh, success of the movie. Moana, Canto. Well, it, I we, can't remember if Canto, not in Canto. Coco is Coco. Pix, Coco's Pixar, so we would that would have been 3D no matter what. But. And and Canto's uh, Disney. Canto's Disney. So so Moana, Frozen. You know, if those were hand drawn animation, I think they would have just been as good. It's just you're looking for good stories. It has nothing to do with the animation style, in my opinion. I could be wrong. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you could ask a, f- a six, seven year old now, what do you prefer? Do you prefer the way Beauty and the Beast looks, or do you prefer the way Moana looks? I mean, they're probably going to pick Moana because yeah. it's the, the hot movie, or you know, one of the hot movies, even though it's been six years since that movie came out. Oh my god, yeah. I know. I said the same thing. I had I just watched it for the first time. Like I still haven't seen it a month ago, and I was like, oh wow, this movie came out six years ago. <laughs> now, jump- Coco. If you if you get a chance, Coco is fantastic. You're fantastic. I know I am, but Coco is fantastic. We watched uh, Encanto. That one Did was not watch that, Encanto. That was pretty good. I was I was kind of surprised. So, following that, now Disney also found a very nice trend where they would just release direct to DVD or direct to video sequels. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they were really good. But this didn't start happening until the 90s. Yeah. So I I know the VHS. F- first ones that we probably saw were were the Aladdin. Aladdin ones. Aladdin did Return of Jafar and yeah, King, of King of Thieves. Both solid solid flicks. Yes. Lion King did Simba's Pride. Which was good. I liked I that one. I that. Hercules did one. Zero to Hero, right? Yeah, but it was more like a prequel. It was a prequel for the show, wasn't it? Yeah, and then they did... Uh, Little Mermaid had one. Tarzan did one. Tarzan and Jane. Tarzan did one. Cinderella did one. Cinderella's done a couple. Snow White. Did Snow. Little Mermaid did one. The only sequel... Fun fact. Two, two. I'm sorry. There's been only two Disney sequels that have been released to theaters. Can you name them? No. Rescuers Down Under. Okay. And Peter Pan Returned to Neverland. Oh, Jungle Book 2. Oh, yeah. That was released at theaters, too. Interesting. But so this movie did have one, and now you have a 1961 film, and then in 2003, they're like, you know what we can do? Mm -hmm. Let's cash in on that 101 Dalmatians. I think it was around the same time, though, as the live action one. I was about to say, I think the the 102 Dalmatians came out in like 2000. 2000. So it was three years. The cartoon show was, um, I guess maybe still in the minds of people was probably still on the Disney Channel and reruns. So, I mean, but I don't think that has anything to do with it. They just look, they just looked for anything to put on video to make money. I mean, I think that was the only real, you know, thing. And then they turned to Patch, the, the dog with the black spot over his eye, it became kind of like the mascot of 101 Dalmatians. Which is still weird for me. Like, because um, that's what they do. They'll, like, for these sequels, they will pick one of, and mm-hmm. unfortunately, you also have Technically, 103 Dalmatians to pick from, and you decided to pick one yeah. named Patch. Okay, because he's merchandisable. That's why you can make those those toys. Uh, I mean, it, well, I remember they when they were doing the Disney Beanie Babies back in the late 90s. You know, I think yeah, you, you're right. I think they had a Patch one and probably one other one. But yeah, I, even in the second live action movie, Patch was the main dog grown up. Mm, you I, know, I don't even remember. So. Let's, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about the live-action 101 Dalmatians, and yeah, we'll see where it goes from there. See where it goes. But first, a quick break. Hey guys, it's Paul, and the Misfit Faction is looking for your help. We are trying to grow not only our network, but also grow our brands, and the best way to do that is if you guys are looking to start your very own podcast. Maybe you guys have been listening to us for a while. Maybe it's something you guys have always wanted to do, but you're not sure how to get started. If you go to podbean.com slash Misfit Faction, you guys will get a month of free podcasting on set as a gift from us. So make sure if you guys are looking to start your own show, you reach out to us and go to podbean.com slash Misfit Faction. Also, maybe you guys have your own online business or service that you're always looking to grow and advertising is a very big part of that if you guys go to sponsorship.podbean.com slash misfit faction you guys can get a hundred dollars worth of free advertising again as a thank you from us to you guys that's sponsorship.podbean.com slash misfit faction all right we are back and now we're talking the live action 101 dalmatians series because there's two and there was supposed to be a third and then we'll talk a little bit about Carrillo, a movie we have not seen but anyway <laughs> so the first 101 dalmatians comes out and it was it was pretty good i didn't have a problem with it i mean we were also what nine years old so we really weren't in the critical uh, we weren't really thinking that far ahead into it critical you know but i'm pretty sure i saw this in theaters oh yeah no i know i remember i did maybe the second i know i've seen both of them yeah. But the first one was written by John Hughes. I didn't know that. I do remember that. Yes. He didn't direct it. It was directed by Stephen Herrick. Yeah. But, you know, Jeff that, Daniels. Jeff Daniels. I love Jeff Daniels. I do love Jeff Daniels. I'm a big fan of Jeff Daniels. 
Now, I will also say that Glenn Co- Close kills it as Corolla. Oh, she's fantastic. She looks great. This was also a time where it was like doing one of these live action Disney things was not the first. Yeah, he was the first. This show. was the first one. So like, I mean, if he actually, if he mm, that I think there was the, a the Jungle Book, but it wasn't a, a it Disney wasn't a, adaptation. It, it was like, Disney. Disney made it, but it wasn't an adaptation of. The, the cartoon. cartoon. It yeah. wasn't. I don't think they. You know, they didn't do talking animals or anything like that. It was very similar to this, where the animals were animals. Mm-hmm. But like for this, it's you know you got now they, they they try and modernize it a little bit. You know, like he's a video game designer now, which, I, of, which when you look back, is dated. It's so dated. So it's like a computer dated. game, you oh. know, and and got the little kid is like the guy who says that the game is going to be successful or not. <laughs> and then, because, uh, you know, instead of, like, a, a fancy song he creates, it's, a, you know, a video game about the whole story. Yeah, and and funny that, you know, we're doing this movie also. It, it almost 36 years to the day this movie was released. It was released on November 27th, 1996. Oh, so that's it was, wild. It was a Thanksgiving weekend, most likely, movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which, you know, when you look back on it, there were so many great movies that came out Thanksgiving weekend. It's a big weekend to release you, movies. Yeah, I mean, you kids be, are home yeah. from school for, for two days out of the week. You know, long weekends, people go away. You know, I remember, I've seen a lot of great, you know, movies Thanksgiving weekend. Pretty sure I saw one of the Harry Potters Thanksgiving weekend. First two came out in the Thanksgiving. Which yeah. is wild to think um, about. Uh, I remember seeing Bugs Life Thanksgiving weekend. Star Wars, uh, no, not Star Wars. Star Wars trailer was before Bugs Life. That's what I remember. Who would win in a fight? The ants from Bugs Life or the ants from Ants? I, I would go with Bugs Life. They use technology and they have circus ants to help. Yeah. Or circus probably, bugs. I'd probably go Bugs Life. I do like ants. I, I like both like, those it's movies. It's a totally different movie. They're so different. That's so, the the, the ants is lot- so much more adult. There was humor. a lawsuit about it too, which is even well, funnier. Because Jeffrey Katzenberg left Disney back when I think they came up with the idea for Ants, when Pixar came up with the idea for Ants. And uh, yeah, so I know uh, Pixar was very pissed off, but they ended up making a better movie. So Yeah, they, they, they won. won. So Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about those movies. We, we'll do like a knockoff movie, like Deep Impact well, and... Uh, DreamWorks' first two animated movies, I thoroughly enjoy. Prince of Egypt, which so I good. think is an underrated gem of a movie. So good. And then Ants. And even Road to El Dorado, I think is an underrated. I quoted that the other day and you didn't get it. I remember you quoting that at all. When, when they're fighting and he goes, you fight like my sister. I fought your sister. That's a compliment. <laughs> I don't remember you saying we were, that. We were at Las Manitas. I could barely hear anything when we were there. That's fair. But yeah, I, I do. The Road to El Dorado is one of my favorites. That was a good one. I still get, like if I'm scrolling through TikTok every once in a while, I'll still get like a video of when Chell's like taking care of the god. <laughs> Yo, for, for a kid's movie, she was definitely, you know, uh, she made me question a lot of things. <laughs> like, hello. Yeah. Anyway. But so the live action movies, you have Jeff Daniels, we mentioned Jolie Richardson, who I, I, I would learn... Uh, Nip is, Talk, Nip right? Talk, that's where I first saw her. And now now you see her in a ton of things. Yes. Yeah, she was in, uh, like, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. She, you know. Oh, that's right. Yeah, she did. Hugh Laurie. Hugh Laurie's in this, that's right. Yeah, and then the, even, I can never remember his name, but the other guy is the one, he ended up playing Ron Weasley's dad. You got Jasper and Horace, and that's Mark Williams. Mark Williams. So, yeah, he went on to play uh, Mr. Weasley. See, I like how, even though it's still set in London even though Jeff Daniels is obviously not Amer- British yeah he's but they, American they, they say he's American they don't you know yeah. they clearly say he's you know but transplanted I, I, American in, in Britain I like how they still you know for stuff like this they still get you know British actors Hugh Laurie also was a police officer or he was a police officer in The Borrowers yeah and, yeah. The, and Mark Williams was the exterminator or something like that and Draco Malfoy is the kid that's Tom, really? that's Tom Felton is the little one Oh really? my god, do you need to lay down? I, I think I do. I, I love that movie. That's another I underrated didn't care movie. For the borrowers I, I I enjoyed it. I remember in school they showed us the original borrowers oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it was very difficult to watch. It was just boring. And yeah. then the one with John Goodman came out. Yeah, I remember that. John Goodman is a bad guy. But anyway. It works. So now this movie it obviously did well enough to to delegate a sequel and create the whole need. <laughs> Four years later, so it wasn't like right off the bat that they were like, "We have to do a sequel." Well, but for a budget of sixty-seven million to pull in three hundred and twenty back in ninety-six, it's damn good. And also, you know, they weren't sure what was going to happen with this. Well, because it's a tough when you think about it. I mean, it wasn't a clear cut. Like, yes, this movie's going to make money because again, the dogs don't talk. So how's that going to look to people? Mm-hmm. You know, it's not a movie. St- I mean, Glenn Close. I wouldn't call her a movie star. I and mean, she's a name to get her to, keep, to be cast as Cruella. That was big. Mm-hmm. Jeff Daniels was a respected actor. Julie Richardson was a respected actor. So it wasn't like, 
you know, big name box office, you know, people were in this, but you know, it respected actors doing a good job. It wasn't like dummy down. It was well done. Mm-hmm. The storyline worked. They they brought in key aspects from the cartoon. They changed up obviously for the times a little bit here and there. You know, and again, you know, the big the big thing is not making the animals talk. Right. Which it worked. Now, if they had chosen to make the animals talk, would it have made the movie different? I, I don't know. I don't know how that would have worked. It probably would have been close to the same, maybe a little different. I don't know. But I, I just thought, you know, the way they were able to make the animals, you know, still, I think react. Do- I also think dogs are easier because people people have a natural tendency to just empathize with dogs That's and sympathize true. with dogs. Like, I I have a cat, and my cat's a, my cat's a jerk, <laughs> right? But like. I still love my cat, but dogs, there's just something about dogs that people, like, if something happens to a dog, like, look at John Wick. Like, we all understood John Wick. We oh, all yeah. completely understood his incredibly murderous rampage because yeah. his dog died. But anyway, so the sequel comes out. Now, the sequel did not do nearly as well. No. No, it, it was more of a bomb. Like, it still made money. It still did all right. The sequel falls bait into some of the most common tropes. And number one is they recast everybody but Cruella. Well, it's a totally different story. Totally different story. So basically, she goes to jail for three years, and she's rehab. I I will grant the fact that they named the doctor Dr. Pavlov is pretty funny. (laughs) But, you know, and she comes out, and then she she immediately relapses, because that's, you know, how this sort of thing works. They even get the same guy. They get the same guy to play her, like, her butler sidekick guy from the first one, but he kind of becomes, like, a hidden good guy. Like, he turns against her at the end and saves the dogs. But Um, it's about one of the dogs from, like, that's a... You know, from the litter of 101 yeah, Like, it's not even... It's it's not Pongo. It's not Perdita. It's Dipstick. Dip, oh, it was Dipstick? Dipstick. Oh, I thought it was Patch. But Dipstick's mate, Dottie, gives birth to three puppies. Domino, Little Dipper, and Oddball, who's an albino. Oh, that's right. The yeah. Oddball. Do these? Do they talk in this? I don't remember. Mm, no. The parrot talks. Oh, yeah. They have the talk. Parrot's about, Eric Idle. Ma- macaw. Macaw. Yeah. Mm. But, uh, yeah. Macaw. I don't... I've, macaw. I think I've only seen this movie once. If anything, I've seen it twice. I saw it in theaters when it first came out and probably on the Disney Channel at some other point in time. At some other point in time. Uh, it wasn't horrible, but it wasn't great. Mm-hmm. It was watchable. You know, going close looks like she's having fun doing it. I'm sure she got a decent amount of money to do it. But the plot was just kind of, eh. It didn't just, didn't really, you know, live up to what the first one was. And and, and that always happens most of the time with sequels. So well, it's even funnier. She wants, she wants to do another one, Glenn Close. Really? Yeah, she's talking, in May 2021, she revealed that she was working on Cruella as an executive producer. So mm-hmm. we'll talk about Cruella in a second. And apparently she wrote a new story as a sequel to the films where she would reprise the role, which is stupid. Please don't. Please At this point, I can't. I wouldn't say no. Okay, it doesn't matter. I would, but so we have Cruella now. Sean and I, we will be honest. We have not seen Cruella. No, not because we have like no desire to, but it's because we have no desire to. <laughs> so I see what you did there. Thanks, man. Now Cruella falls in the same vein as some of the other more modern Disney, where they're like, let's talk about the the antagonists and. Give like them Maleficent the, and what's another one? Maleficent like opened the door to this. I think yeah. Cruella was the second one. I don't think there's any other ones off the well, top. I know like not it wasn't Disney, but another studio did that Peter Pan movie with um, Oh, where they talk about Captain Hook. Where Hugh Jackman is Blackbeard and then Becomes Captain? No, Garrett Headland, the guy from Tron, he plays James Hook. And he's like, you know, young guy. And yeah. he looks like he's like a sidekick of Peter Pan's in the movie, and then you're like, oh, okay. What's the story going to be? You know, they turn on each other, yada, 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 whatever. So it's, it's again, it's just, it's always, do you want to know where the bad guy comes from? You know, I know there's always people who's like, well, they weren't always this bad, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, like I said, Maleficent kind of opened the door for it. But of course they, they turn, I know I've, I've seen bits and pieces of Cruella. So it's like, there's a more evil woman that bosses over her. I think Emma Thompson. Yeah. And it's like, you know, so she's like the Cruella of this movie, and then Cruella becomes Cruella. Yeah, so, because her name's Estella in this. Estella? Yeah, Estella. Estella. Uh, there you go. But, like, she has, like, her black and white hair is apparently natural. Hmm. Yeah, and she's, like, a thief and all these things, and she's terif- She, like, loses her mom, or loses his mother's her mother's necklace while being chased by Dalmatians, and mm. then they push the mom off a cliff. It's weird. Yeah, so there's, like, this whole thing, but, again, that was never really a show a movie that i had an interest to see like i love emma stone i really yeah, do very good actress oh very good but yeah i'm just 
No, I mean, no interest. It's to the point where, you know, when we started doing this movie podcast, we, we looked at each other and we're like, this means we're going to have to go to the movies a lot because we're going to have to, you know, see these movies. We're going to have to talk about them. Mm-hmm. And I think we both just reached a point where it's just like, no, we don't. No. <laughs> if we don't want to see the movie, we don't just talk about the movie. We'll, well talk about movies we want to talk about. In mm, all honesty, yeah. we have done, we get better downloads for stuff like this, but we'll still go see a more modern movie when we get a chance. But mm. even that's like few and far between nowadays. Mm, pretty much. But yeah, so I, I do want to see Cruella at some point, but I just, I don't have any desire. So time, it's just you, know, you sit down, you know, you watch, you, you turn on the TV, and you're like, you know, what? I just want to watch something I know I'm gonna like. Yeah, maybe when, uh, maybe when the sequel comes out, because apparently there is a sequel that they're working on for this. Sorry? I'm sure it did well enough. Did Corolla go to theaters, or did that go straight to I think Disney it went Plus? Straight to Disney Plus. Okay. I mean, the budget was 100 to 200 million, and the box office was 233. See, that's crazy to me how that movie is made for 200 million dollars. I mean, I, I just don't understand how that movie is so expensive. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think I think it went straight to I think it went to Disney Plus, yeah. But that's the problem cuz like this was also during a time of COVID and like it was hard to do movies. So even even just breaking even for a COVID movie was successful. Yeah. Which it's, is wild to think. I, I oh that's you know what? It did go straight to Disney Plus. I think it was one of the ones where you had to pay money to watch that's it. That's right. Yeah. It's one of the the things against the guy that no, got fired. It, the first major red carpet event since the COVID-19 pandemic began and was released in the United States theatrically and simultaneously available on Disney Plus oh, with, okay. with with premiere access. Stupid. But yeah, I mean it's a it's an interesting example, you know, like that was a time where if you if you made any of your money back, mm-hmm. you were a successful movie. Oh yeah, wild to, to think. I wonder how this movie would have done had it not suffered from COVID. I'd say maybe it another made money, maybe like another hundred mil, probably. Yeah, because that's what they base it on. They base it on ticket sales. Yeah, but I that was one of the few benefits to like the COVID pandemic. Like movies were coming out on streaming, which was a nice for us sometimes. Like we still liked going to the theaters. We did more than once, but also like they. It took. It made them relook at what makes a movie successful, right? Is it just viewership numbers? Is it you know? Did how many people? Because I know our friend Rob, like he he has a family of three. Mm-hmm. Like for him, it was much easier to just go. Oh, Disney Plus thirty dollars. There you go. Yeah, because when you a, think about it, it's ten dollars a person. You're not paying for snacks. Mm-hmm. You're not driving. You're you know, in the comfort of your home, and you're paying less per ticket than you would at a theater. I mean, but, I, I I totally understood paying to see the movie on the on disney plus mm-hmm. i got it it was just you chose the wrong movie to start it off with with mulan like just there was no general still haven't, interest still haven't seen it. in that movie it just seemed like okay this is the movie you choose you couldn't have you know maybe should have been black widow i mean obviously we know the whole fallout from that but you know or this movie or something different i don't know maybe you made it cheaper you know, mm-hmm. I don't remember what it was. It was ten dollars per. It was thirty Something bucks. Like it was twenty nine yeah. ninety nine plus tax. But I think it was you had to pay. I don't know if it was a one time fee or you had to pay per month extra to get access to those movies. I can't Something remember. Like, I don't remember because they don't do it anymore. No, 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 no. They definitely don't. I think it was actually like per movie, or something like that. I think it was too. Yeah. Which is, if they wanted to do that, they should have done it. If you have a Disney Plus membership, it mm-hmm. should have been like twenty dollars. But. If you wanted to just go on Disney Plus and watch this movie, thirty dollars. But when you look at it, I mean, look at, I mean, we we enjoyed what HBO Max was doing, but mm-hmm. in the long run, that was a huge mistake on HBO's on Warner Brothers' part by putting these movies on there for no charge. Yeah, like, I, I, like well, we like, we saw business sense. I it was a good PR move. Oh yeah, but in the long run, it lost them millions of dollars. Mm-hmm. I think they might have been able to get it on the back end with tax. Maybe. You know, like kind of like how they, they boxed up Batgirl yeah. and saved money by boxing it up. Yeah. I'm curious to see if they're ever going to release it. No. They're I don't never going to we'll see that. Never, we'll never see that. see that movie. It's going to be right there with the air cut of Suicide Squad. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the only, the only benefits to WB's move was they still put movies out into theaters like Wonder Woman, Kong, uh, Godzilla vs. Kong. Kong. And Godzilla vs. Kong was a movie where we were like, we have to go see it in a yeah, theater. That you movie need a was big like, screen. Yeah, that movie was... Still, you know, still they were never going to release Justice League to theaters. And it was smart that they saved it for, for HBO Max. Well, it, was big, it was a big push for HBO Max. Yeah. I mean, they were, it was smart. They were promoting that for like a year. In all honesty, though, if, if they had put it into theaters, it would have made money. It would have made money. Yeah. It, it wouldn't have... I don't think it would have made as much as Justice League, in all honesty. Probably not. And people would have been confused. 
<laughs> but any other thoughts on 101 Dalmatians? Because I have uh, one just thought. A, just a general, just a a movie that I look back on fondly. I would. It's not a movie I watch with a regularity. With a regular regularity, I guess is the word I'm looking for. But I highly recommend it if you've never seen it. Which again, I don't know where you've been in the world if you haven't. Uh, it's just a fun family movie. I, I I highly recommend it. It was just a lot of fun. You know, good. You know, quaint little movie. So I have a terrible 101 Dalmatians in the video game Kingdom Hearts, mm-hmm. which is a Disney mm-hmm. and Final Fantasy kind of mashup. You had to find all 101 freaking Dalmatians. That was an an achievement. It was something you did. And dear God, well, you had to find 99 puppies. And dear God, was it a pain in the ass. And still is. And I still have post-traumatic stress about it. If you can believe it, I've actually never played Kingdom Hearts. I can believe that. You are not much of a video game kind of guy, which is a shame. Which is weird, though, because I think that game I would actually enjoy Mm -hmm. because of the Disney aspect to it. I agree. Dark City rating? For, for for the franchise in general? No, do the animated movie and the live action movie. The animated, I'll give it three and a half, okay. mostly just because of nostalgia and, like I said, they could get away with a lot more, like her smoking and like it's violent. It's <laughs> it's funny. We were watching it this morning, and the scene at the end when they all dress, when they all roll in the soot to become laboratories. Yep. I was just like, oh god, someone's gonna start bitching about this. You know oh, yeah. it's coming. You know it's coming. And like even the demons, like, come on, let's all roll in the soot. We'll all be Labradors. Oh. And I'm like, you don't have to be black to be a Labrador. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, why is my mind going to this? Like, this is the world we're... we're in, and the fact that I have to think about this when I'm watching a freaking kids movie, mm-hmm. you know, and it just annoys me sometimes. Like, oh god. Well, we do have a fan feedback Friday if you want. Sure. Oh wait, we gotta do Star City ratings. I, what did oh, I say? I'm sorry. You said three and a half for the anime movie. What yeah. about the live action movie? Three. Three. Yeah. Okay. I'll always go animated over the live action yeah, for the most for the most part. There um, are a few exceptions. I think I'll go three and a half on both. Okay. I'd say that I honestly think the live action is on par with the animated movie. That's fair. You know, they're both very good. But they don't sing Cruella de Vil in it. In the remake? Yeah, I don't think they so. They sing it on the radio. Is it on the radio at the end? Don't they like have they, like something playing? I don't remember. But because uh, obviously, yeah, he's not a songwriter anymore. But yeah. I feel like I've heard it in the movie. I just can't remember where I've heard it. Mm. But, maybe uh, the sequel. Maybe. So, uh, Fan Feedback Friday from Friday, November 18th. This was a while ago. Sorry about that, guys. This week, now that the holiday season is beginning, what is your go-to holiday film? Fun fact, there's only like one film about Thanksgiving, and that's uh, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. That's true. Yeah. Uh, or we Charlie have, Brown Thanksgiving. Or Charlie Brown Thanksgiving. We got uh, our friend Mike wrote, It's a Wonderful Life, mm-hmm. uh, White Christmas, Muppet Christmas Carol. Carol, good one. Let's see. The Nightmare Before Christmas. Uh, I wonder who wrote that one. It, no, it wasn't Ronnie. Uh, yeah. It's a Wonderful Life and White Christmas. I uh, got some good ones. It's good ones. Miracle on 34th Street. What's your go-to? So go-to to start the holiday season? Yeah. That's a tough one. I would probably say Rudolph. That's a good one. Yeah, the Fleischer stuff. The uh, yeah, the the, the 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 claymation movies that we did on last year. Yeah, that um, was that was a good episode. Those I could go. I guess you could go Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street because it starts technically on Thanksgiving Day, mm. so it makes sense. That yeah, would yeah, be yeah. one of the first ones you'd watch. But Christmas Carol is usually a Christmas Eve movie. You mm. know, you got to save that one for. I like how the but Santa- there's so many versions of it. Like <laughs> Santa Claus. Santa Claus. I like the other Santa Claus movie. I like. I mean, there's so many. Christmas I still gotta watch the show. Yeah, me too. Yeah, and Santa uh, Claus too. I like too. I, I like Santa Claus too. Still, I won't watch the third. Third one. one's bad. And then uh, producer Melanie is a big fan of Scrooge. Scrooge is very underrated. Yes. Yes. Uh, Christmas Vacation is another comedy one. But see, now they're doing all these 24-hour marathons. They've done so. They they used they to just do, do a, the Christmas story, but now TBS is doing Elf. Oh God. And easy, easy. And today's Christmas Vacation. 24 hours. I don't get it. I, couldn't I don't do see the appeal. 24 hours of Elf. No. I couldn't do 24 hours of Christmas Story. I no, mean, no. Melanie hates Christmas. She doesn't Christmas. like Christmas Story? Yeah. Really? I, I think it's because it used to be on like all the time. Oh, well, yeah. Then wasn't it on like usually like the day before Christmas? It was not Christmas Eve. Maybe it was Christmas Eve. It was done 24 hours, but. I don't know. I'm, it, it's That's there. crazy. I'd rather watch the Yule Log for 24 hours. Oh, let's. I mean, I'll watch it like once. I'll watch it once. But then I don't need to see it again. Ironically, A Christmas Story is a movie that I have not seen in its entirety, like consecutively, since I saw it for the first time. Because, like, it'll always be on. 
and I'll catch different parts. I've not watched the whole movie in order. Yeah, it's hard. That's a movie where like there's so many there's there's a few good parts that Mm -hmm. like you know obviously the triple dog Dario or the Santa Claus visit or the you know where he shoots his eye. I mean like. I've you, like you. It's like I turn it on and it's like, oh, it's this scene. Okay, let me it's watch this. It's always the same four scenes. Yeah, because those are the best. But but come on, fragile. Fragile. It's just you know. <laughs> Again. All right, that is going to wrap us up. Don't oh. forget, guys, if you want to participate in Fan Feedback Friday, you can also find us on Facebook, the Cinematic Adventures. You can find us on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, anything. Just type in Cinematic Adventures or type in The Misfit Faction. Odds are you'll find some of our material. And make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share, all that jazz. It really helps out the show. As always, I'm Paul. I'm Sean. And we'll see you guys next time. Woof.